just describe now the construction of our uh, sagnac interferometer. Uh, what we've got here, first of all, is a triangular form that we have 200 meters of single mode fiber optic cable wound around. Uh, I wanted to experiment with the triangular shape uh, and I wanted to also experiment with uh, the placement of the loop. So in this case we've got the loop offset from the uh, spin axis and we've also tested it with it uh, directly uh, symmetrical to the spin axis and frankly it makes absolutely no difference in terms of the response. We get the same uh, sensitivity to rotation regardless of uh, where you position the loop in terms of the spin axis. Now, uh, the essential components are as follows. We've got the power supply for the laser here with the switch. The, uh, the laser is a DFB 1310 nanometer uh, infrared laser, which goes into our fiber optic cable uh, right here. Um, we've got our 2x2 two two coupler wound around on this side, and that goes off to our loop, which then comes back to our photodiode right here, pin photodiode with a uh, a, a fiber optic cable connector directly mounted onto it. This then goes into our data logger. So this is our ADD converter and uh, it's got a wireless uh, Bluetooth uh, transmitter connected to it so as the data is, is collected in real time by the PIC processor that's inside, the data is sent wirelessly over to our computer where we can uh, import that data directly into Excel. What we've also got is a little photo detector, which is on channel 2, so the main data goes into channel 1 of our A to D, and then the photo detector data goes into channel 2, and this uh, is basically just to count our rotation rate. So every time this photo detector passes by, you can see there's a light here, so every time it passes by the light, there's a flash because it generates a voltage, on the photo detector and that goes into our Excel data as a blip, a red blip, which tells us every time it's passed by at that particular point. So uh, that's essentially how the system is set up. One thing I should also mention is that we've got a little uh, paddle wheel on the back here which is used to control the, uh, the intensity of the beam. This is like our uh, paddle wheel for polarization phase control. So we adjust this uh, uh, back and forth this way until we get the lowest voltage on the uh, photodiode and this tells us uh, when we're uh, in the uh, uh, out of phase condition which is usually the most sensitive condition for detecting rotation. Just to show the uh, ADD converter system in a little more detail uh, this uh, unit here is quite similar to the one that's on the rotor. Uh, you can see here is our PIC 16F777 processor and it's driving a 2x16 line LCD display here with some switches just to control the menu functions. The only difference between this one and the one that's on the rotor is that the, the one on the rotor also includes the RS-232 interface for going to the Bluetooth. So it's a fairly straightforward construction uh, and uh, the, there's also a battery pack uh, in the uh, wireless one using uh, two lithium batteries so it has a lifetime of a couple of days. So everything has been turned on so we're just going to rotate the interferometer up to its maximum speed and then uh, back down again. What I've got shown here is a calibration curve of the interferometer that we're working with. Uh, effectively what we're doing is uh, we're starting with the uh, stationary state here and we turn on the uh, power to our uh, turntable and so the rotation rate increases up to about 107 rpm and then uh, we turn the power off and then it decreases down to zero. 
a rotation rate. We then turn the power back on, it goes back up to 107 RPM, and then uh, we turn it off and it uh, slowly goes back down to zero again. So each one of these red marks uh, marks every time that the rotor passes the same point around 360 degrees. So these mark out each rotation along uh, our little test run. Now what we've got shown in the blue is the voltage of the photodiode coming out of our interferometer. It's uh, amplified about 11 times and uh, we uh, set the phase uh, to 100 degrees, 180 degrees out of phase to begin with so we're at a voltage minimum and then as the rotation start, starts to be, uh, increase here uh, we go up to about 38 RPM and we hit our maximum um, voltage which is uh, the in-phase condition for the two uh, uh, counter-propagating beams. As we continue to increase the speed, they pass through and go back to out-of-phase. Then uh, as we continue to increase, they go uh, back to in-phase, and we reach our maximum speed, so they hit a plateau here. Then they go back in reverse, so they go back to out-of-phase, then to in-phase, then to out-of-phase, and the process repeats again. You can see it looks almost exactly the same from here as it does from here. So this just shows that uh, we're getting uh, that the two beams, uh, counterpropagating beams, are moving their phase relationship in relation to one another in proportion to the rotation rate that we're getting uh, with the rotor. And we can actually then uh, calibrate the voltage shift that we get uh, with respect to our RPM. And it's not going to be linear because it's going to be more sensitive at the low range and then it's going to, uh, you know, kind of get less sensitive up here and then become more sensitive again. But it gives us uh, a way to plot a curve uh, as to uh, the calibration of voltage versus rotation rate. This is a zoom in of the data from our interferometer. Uh, we're down around uh, like 100 millivolts uh, from about here to here, uh, each one of these divisions. And you can see that uh, the uh, wireless data reveals a lot of detail about what's going on. The RPM data from the distance between these different uh, markers it gives us a rough idea of uh, the rotation rate, but you can see that a lot more detail is revealed by the Sagnac interferometer in terms of uh, what's going on, like for instance wobble, uh, various different other effects, uh, and it seems to be more sensitive to rotation. We can see subtle changes going on in the rotation rate. So uh, this is a real advantage of using the wireless data logging. Another advantage of importing directly into Excel is that we can do detailed analysis on specific observations from the interferometer. <clears throat> For example, here we've got uh, the output at about 1 20th of a fringe. Uh, we're showing a, a wobble in the rotation rate, which is a periodic effect. Uh, let's say we want to look at this in more detail. Uh, because it's kind of noisy, uh, we, let's say we want to average across each rotation and find out what well, maybe over 10 rotations or 20 rotations what exactly this uh, pattern will end up looking like. So here's just uh, some raw data taken at different hours during the day and we've plotted it out here with averages of let's say 10 to 20 of these rotation rates and you can see that the effect of the wobble is fairly consistent over the course of the day. We can average uh, these values to get a final curve which gives us a very smooth detailed look at uh, where the wobble is occurring during the rotation since let's say this is one complete rotation and this is when a particular part of the interferometer is pointing north then we can see, well, this is where the wobble is occurring as it goes around uh, the cycle. So uh, this can reveal a lot of extra information than you couldn't get, let's say, even with an oscilloscope.